Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Joseph Coppice, and today I'm joined by my guest, Dr. Tom Bain. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Joe. Thanks for having me. That's great to hear. So, uh, so Dr. Tom, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what it is you do? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm a, uh, like you, I'm a chiropractor. I uh, went to National College of Chiropractic, uh, graduated in uh, 1994. Um, I went to, uh, after uh, a little bit of work in the city of Chicago, I, I moved to Belgium and uh, I got involved in functional medicine. Uh, started working for a company that was um, doing a lot of the importing of products and distribution of products and, and throughout Europe um, of a lot of the functional medicine, early functional medicine brands, uh, Jeffrey Brandt Land's uh, Healthcom products. Uh, some of those products. So I was very involved in the uh, marketing, education, product development side of, of the supplement industry. So I got involved in a, in a, at a very early stage of my career. Um, and I've, I've stayed active in it. I, I've, I've also maintained a family practice uh, in Glenview, Illinois after we moved back from Europe uh, in 2000. So uh, I came back and uh, initially I was going to uh, just have a family practice. Uh, but the lure of staying involved on the industry side, product development, I developed a particular interest in research. Um, and and I, I practiced during the day and I pursued some of those interests uh, at night. I, I was involved with a number of companies in the professional space, uh, helping them with product development, lecturing on education, th things like that. So I had been, I maintained an involvement over the years in the uh, professional supplement industry. And in uh, 2012, um, I launched a company called Microbiome Labs uh, with two partners of mine. And um, it was it was interesting because the, where it came from was really uh, we were doing a market analysis for one of the big companies in our space. And what we found about, you know, when we did a deep dive on probiotics, we found that you know, many of the products that were being sold in the marketplace, retail, professional, you name it, weren't really supported by science. Uh, there was no real clinical human clinical trials that were being performed with the finished products uh it seems that the game is you know we've got one clinical trial that shows that this strain fixes this symptom so and then we've got another study that shows that this strain fixes that symptom let's put them together and let's say we fix both those symptoms or in the case of some products they'll do it with 10 different strains and say that it fixes 10 different problems um, but that's not science, you know, so, so we were um, making a presentation about the state of the probiotic industry uh, with this in mind that, you know, we wanted to bring some science and some uh, clinical knowledge to, to the game. We wanted to study finished formulas. And, uh, and we had some ideas with some interesting spore form bacteria that we had located in, uh, at the University of London. And so we started doing some human studies with it, with the idea that a lot of the bigger companies would embrace the science, that they would embrace this new concept in probiotics. Um, but unfortunately, not fortunately or unfortunately, how you look at it, but uh, none of them bit. And so we had to uh, launch the company ourselves. So we launched uh, Microbiome Labs in late 2012, and. Uh, We've become the leading professional brand of probiotics. Uh, our brand Megaspore is, is the leading uh, probiotic in the professional space. Um, and the reason is clear and simple. Uh, we do double blind placebo controlled human studies to prove the efficacy and, and functionality of our products. Great. So you alluded to it a little bit, but um... You talked about uh, your probiotics using the spores, correct? 
Yes. Uh, can you, for those who may not be aware, why, how is that different than other probiotics that are on the market? So there's, there's some bacteria that have as part of their life cycle, the ability to form a spore. There's a number of them. Some of them are pathogens, but the bacillus strains in particular are bacteria that have, uh, they've been in our environment for as long as we can look back. So we've, we've co-evolved with these bacteria throughout man's entire creation. And so, so um, the, these bacteria have the ability to form a spore. And when they're in that spore form, then they have the ability to survive through our GI tract. So the problem with most uh, lactobifido-based probiotics is they just don't survive through the GI tract. You know, when you look at the survivability studies that they do, they'll typically do it at a pH of three, three and a half, or four. You know, the pH of a healthy stomach is 1.2. And so uh, when you put those bacteria in a real gastric survivability model, they don't, they don't survive. But that's not really what their benefits are. Uh, lactobifido-based probiotics have benefits, and I'm not here to bash them, but they're more cell signaling molecules, and so they, they more send a signal to the immune system, and the immune system corrects the symptom. They're not really changing the microbiome. So spores, when they get in, they recondition the, the microbiome. They go in, they survive through the stomach, they get into the small intestine, and they start to recondition. They, they use quorum sensing to speak to the bacterial environment, and they're able to see when there's an overgrowth. Um, and when there is an overgrowth, then they start to attack those species, those pathogens that are overgrowing. So in the dysbiotic gut, we see them attacking candida, we see them attacking E. coli, staph, infections, bacteria that are you know, they're supposed to be part of our microbiome, but they're supposed to be part of a microbiome in very small numbers. And when they start to get overgrown is when we start to have disease and, and dysfunction. And so, so the spore formers are transient organisms that recondition the bowel by getting rid of the bad guys and creating an environment that's conducive for the beneficial bacteria that you got from your mom to increase in its numbers. And so that's the main difference. It's, a, it's really a completely different story. Um, you know, everybody else saying, oh, I'm going to reseed my, my bowel with these good bacteria, these lacto bacteria. Thank goodness that doesn't work because if it did work, you would actually be creating redundancy in your microbiome. You know, you'd be putting the same eight or 10 strains in. That doesn't represent a healthy microbiome. Diversity represents a healthy microbiome. And so uh, spores are kind of like the gardener to the garden, right? Um, they, they go in, they till the soil, they, they create an environment that's conducive for your good bacteria to increase in their numbers. And why aren't they doing that on their own? Well, because they're being crowded out by pathogens. So while the spores get rid of the pathogen, it, it allows your beneficials to increase in their numbers. Very good. So a lot of research has been going and looking deeper and deeper into the gut like you're doing uh, with your research. Um, what are some symptoms that people uh, tend to present with? I know it's quite a variety. Uh, what are some symptoms that people tend to prevent, pre present with Excuse me, when they have dysbiosis or altered gut microbiome? So this was the main question that we had. Right. We were like, so here we are. We are we're not even an infant company. We, we are a fetus. You know, we, we aren't selling any product. We've got this product. I've used it in my clinical practice. I've seen some good results with people with digestive and immune related disorders. So my practice is primarily focused on digestive disorders. I didn't dream to be that guy. It just that's just how my life ended up. Um, I, I do functional medicine. People with digestive disorders seem to be better referral sources than people with any other condition, at least in, in, in my neighborhood. So, um, you know, 15 years ago, my, gut, my uh, practice was 70, 80% digestive health. And so it's remained that way throughout my professional career. So, we were seeing benefits. We were seeing benefits in the autoimmune patients that I was seeing. 
We were seeing digestive improvements in the early stages, but as we gave it to them longer, we were seeing improvements in the pain of a rheumatoid patients. So we were seeing what, what seemed to us like what we were really making an impact to the microbiome. But how could we prove it? How could we study it in humans so that we could go to physicians and we could say, hey, look what we're doing. You know, this is what separates us. So we came across a researcher who had just created a model, a human model for metabolic endotoxemia. And so basically the model was that he could take healthy individuals, college age students, and he could show that after a meal, that the amount of LPS, lipopolysaccharide, that spilled into their blood, this low-grade septicemia that was happening after they ate a meal, um, that, that, that I remember as, that's leaky gut. I've been studying this for 25 years. You're talking about spilling of bacteria and bacterial waste products into the bloodstream, and then the cytokine inflammatory response that happens as a result of that low-grade septicemia that's happening after you eat. I know, I understand that, that's leaky gut. So he says, we've got this model and what we can do is we can bring healthy kids in, show that they're healthy, we can make them do a challenge meal, we could show that they spill this LPS into their blood, we could send them home with a 30 day supply of your probiotic and then we could see you know, how, they, how they respond to it. So we did a pilot study first and then we built it into a full double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Um, and then now we're doing that same uh, study again. We're doing a second phase of that. But I'll tell you about the results. That study's ongoing right now, uh, so I don't have any, any results on the larger one. But the one that's finished was published in 2017 in, uh, in a peer-reviewed journal. Um, and so what we showed is that when we fed healthy students a high fat, high refined carbohydrate meal, that they spilled five to six fold increase of LPS into their blood. So they would eat a McDonald's breakfast on a fasted stomach. We would test them. They would have zero, none, none to very little LPS in their serum. They would eat the McDonald's breakfast, and five hours later, there would be a five to six fold increase in LPS in their bloodstream. So we sent them home, made them, had them take a 30 day supply of the probiotic, no change in diet, no change in lifestyle, had them come back, do the challenge meal again, and we completely blunted the LPS. But we also improved a number of inflammatory markers, a number of inflammatory cytokines that we know that these, this inflammatory cascade of cytokines is part of every digestive disorder that we know of, every autoimmune disease that we know of. It's the main marker that shows someone's going from dysglycemia to diabetes. Um, it is uh, one of the main markers that shows a progression of any cancer to, uh, to, through its uh, more progressive states. We know it's what takes the HIV patient to uh, AIDS. And so these are all studies that have shown that this spilling of LPS and the inflammatory cascade that happens after it, all these conditions have this either as its cause of the condition or as a significant reason for why uh, the patient isn't healing or isn't getting better. And so so we thought, well, if we can show that we could fix that and we, and we published that story, now we have conversation about all of these conditions. Now we are the, the probiotic of choice for any autoimmune disease. Name the autoimmune disease, Google it with LPS. You'll see all the studies that connect LPS with the onset or the progression of that condition. And we're the only probiotic that shows that we can reduce LPS in humans. And so, so that's been the genesis of both our growth as a company and all of the continued clinical trials that we've done on top of that. So from that one study to date, 26 other studies have spun out of it.
-hmm. because researchers have said, oh my God, LPS is connected to rheumatoid arthritis. I want to do a rheumatoid arthritis study. So that study's ongoing right now in Romania. Uh, you know, so, so that's how, from that one clinical trial, we've spun out 26 other studies. And now we're, we're, we're able to disseminate more of that information to our doctors uh, to help them understand the importance of stopping the seepage of LPS into your bloodstream after a meal. Mm -hmm. So you found that uh, LPS was significantly increased after a diet of high fat and refined sugar, such as a McDonald's type of breakfast. Have you looked into what diet pairs the best with your probiotic or your spores? So I'd love to have a one size fits all conversation with you. You know, I wish it, I wish it existed, but it, it really doesn't. But these are some of the facts that we have. And I think that, you know, I'd love to have this conversation with you again in 12 months because I think the amount of information that we're going to get over the next 12 months might allow us to be even more specific in what we're saying. But one of the things that we know, one of the more endotoxic molecules is saturated fat. And so, so it, it, it is challenging for some of us who utilize keto diets in, as part of our protocols. Um, and so, so the, the, the point is, is that, you know, if, if you're a practitioner and you use diet and lifestyle modification, then you've seen benefits of keto dieting and, and we don't have to go there. Um, but what frequently happens is, is we see at, at some point that, oh, the condition got worse again. Oh, darn. The, the had Alzheimer's patient that was doing keto really was doing well and then geez, I guess the Alzheimer's must have taken over. Well, I think a question we really have to start asking ourselves is if we weren't protecting the microbiome, was it not that, that we, the diminishing, there became a diminishing return from the keto diet because of the endotoxemia we were creating from the saturated fats? And so I think that there's a, a lot of study, a lot of research money is going into this to better understand it. Um, I know this, when we wanted to create endotoxemia in dogs for a clinical study, all we did was pour coconut oil on their kibble. And the dogs that ate the kibble had little to no endotoxemia. The dogs that ate the kibble with the uh, coconut oil on it had measurable, demonstrable endotoxemia. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, there's, so we can say some things that are a problem. And, and so, so in pa do I have patients that are on keto? Yes, I do. Uh, but I am a fanatic about protecting their microbiome. And I think that that's the way that we can continue to get benefits from keto dieting in the therapeutic setting and, um, and, and still protect the microbiome because it's, you know, the endotoxemia, we're seeing it now they're finding it in the lesions of the Alzheimer's brain. They're finding LPS. Gut-derived LPS is, the, is making its way across the blood-brain barrier, embedding itself into the white matter, and then the immune system is reacting to that LPS being in those tissues, creating the, the lesions of the Alzheimer's brain. Mm -hmm. And so, so really what we're saying here is that, you know, even Alzheimer's is a digestive-related condition. And, um, and, you know, so one of the, you know, I know your interest in, uh, in, in neurology, mm -hmm. you know, we have one of the leading, um, uh, emergency room surgeons in the world. This is going to, this story is going to come around, but it's, it's fascinating. One of the leading, uh, trauma surgeons in the world is also, uh, he's done a lot of postdoctoral education in, uh, in nutrition and, he feels that the endotoxic response post-surgically is the reason why many surgeries fail. So, you know, you get in a car accident and your intestines are all torn up and you need to be put back together. And these guys meticulously sew you back together. In their experience, the patients with the lower LPS have let, they, they heal quicker. They're out of the ICU faster. They have less readmittance into the hospital. So they've already seen that connection in trauma surgery. So we're going through the process now at the University of Florida to try to do a large scale study to, to uh, 
to first prove this fact again. It's been proven in smaller studies, but one first identify it and then to provide treatment for these patients in the ER setting. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that same thing is translated into the post-concussion uh, market. Uh, many of these athletes, some of them get better from their concussions pretty well and others don't. Uh, some, some, you know, some athletes will have two, three concussions and gone through the proper protocols. They seem to heal well from those, you know, we'll see long term, but, but in, at least in the short term, they seem to heal up from them. And then some don't. And some get one concussion and they can't heal from it. One of the things that they're noticing in some of these patients with concussion syndromes that aren't healing is elevated LPS. It, this, this is the low grade inflammation. It, it drives inflammation in our body. And so it's really the growth of the company and the growth of our research is all stemmed around stopping this one process. But this one process seems to be at the root of many of the problems that, that we're dealing with day to day. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned Alzheimer's and concussion uh, as far as gut health goes. But how about uh, like anxiety and depression? Have you uh, looked into those particular conditions at all and how the gut affects them? You know, what's interesting is that that initially was anecdotal feedback we were getting from our docs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got some very interesting uh, holistic practitioners in our database that work with our products. And some of them are like exclusively anxiety and depression patients. They're, they're managing those patients, you know, with diet and lifestyle and supplementation. And those were some of the first people that were, you know, they were giving it the, the Megaspore to large concentrations of those patients. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of us who didn't have practices that were focused on that, were seeing that here and there with a few patients where they were reporting that they were feeling a little bit more emotionally stable. Um, but in the patients where their practices were almost exclusively that, they started reporting very early that this was, you know, one of the first things that they were seeing. And, and again, it, it comes down to that healthy microbiome the lack of inflammation first, and then the byproducts of what it's able to produce. So a healthy microbiome is going to produce 90% of the serotonin that, that makes you happy. And so, um, you know, and, and dovetailing this back into some the diet question, uh, large concentrations of vegetable fibers uh, with the probiotics in the in the depressive and, and and in the anxiety and depressive patients uh seems to have been also part of the feedback we've gotten from them uh, you know that that the the patients that were eating predominantly vegetables maybe 70 80 percent of their diet being vegetables um that those patients were having the more uh quicker and more thorough response uh, to the, to the, to the th probiotic uh, than patients that weren't on the probiotic or patients that were on the probiotic but maybe eating uh, more paleo or more uh, keto. And so, so those are anecdotal things that we would love to study. You mm -hmm. know, I, I have lots of these little clinical pearls that have, have dropped on me over the years uh, from docs that have used our products and things that I've seen clinically. And we're, we're doing our best to find ways to, to analyze that and study that, um, both in, clinically in, in humans and, and, and in the laboratory. We've made some big investments in some university research, microbiome research departments, uh, just so we can understand what's going on. You know, uh, we have very little understanding of the benefits of some of the postbiotics that are produced by Megaspore that we know they're there. We know that there's some antibiotic uh, type postbiotics that are produced by the spores. Um, and so, so we want to get a better understanding of that. We want to get a better understanding of those things too. So our research has branched from, you know, human clinicals and we've gone in and we've done some modeling studies where we, we look at a human digestive tract in a laboratory setting. It's, 
it's not really a human study, but it's based on a human digestive tract to try to get more data, to try to get more understanding of, you know, what our product does. And, and you know, I can tell you what Megaspore does in the ascending colon and, and how that differs from in the transverse colon. Um, it's a very, these are very simple cost-effective studies. Any probiotic company could do those studies, but very few of them do. Um, and I believe the reason is because there's, there's nothing different happening. There's no mm-hmm. change as the dead bacteria pass through. Once they get to the immune system, they get to the payers patches, the gall, there could be some certain immune triggering reactions that are happening that may subdue a symptom. Uh, you know, there's lots of studies with lacto bifido showing improvements in IBS type symptoms. Now, I don't dispute those findings, but those findings aren't because the microbiome's changing. Uh, it's because you're getting a temporary signal to the immune system to treat the symptom. And so, and that's fine. And that, that will always be part of, you know, the, the treatment protocols people use. But our interest is changing the microbiome. And we find that when we can actually change the microbiome, the symptoms of IBS go away and stay away. Mm-hmm. So we feel like the reconditioning of the microbiome is truly um, the way to, to correct these problems. You're really at the source. Yeah. Whereas these other things that, that we've used throughout the years, they, they give you temporary benefits. They give you symptom improvements, but they don't change the underlying problem that's causing the symptom. Right. So I'm always curious about uh, personal and professional testimonials. So would you be able to provide maybe an example of uh, maybe yourself taking the probiotics or maybe a patient that really had a profound change? So, uh, yes, I, I had a, a young man who was a senior in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was the early stages of microbiome labs. And um, uh, he was senior high school. He was uh, emaciated. The ulcerative colitis that he had was so, it, he was in such a constant acute flare of ulcerative colitis that he was about as skinny as a human being could be. Um, he was, he came to me uh, for a consult preoperatively. Uh, he was about to have 18 inches of his colon removed in two weeks. And uh, the conversation was all about what are we going to do postoperatively. And so I, at the time, was the only clinic in the world that had Megaspore. Uh, I had, uh, at the time, I had 50 bottles of it. And I was giving it to some of my patients. And I was starting to see interesting changes in patients that had IBS, you know, a little bloating, a little gas. I was seeing quick results with them. So I said to the mother, I said, you know, we don't have anything to lose here. Uh, the dietary changes I wanted to make are part of his healing program. So uh, everything we talk about here today can be implemented. Um, but let's give him this probiotic and uh, pre-op and uh, let's see how it, it impacts him, you know, and, and let's hope that it's part of the process that makes his life a little bit healthier postoperatively. So two days after the appointment, she called and said, he's a lot better that the bloody stools had stopped and he feels and looks a lot better should she cancel the surgery. And I said, you know, I think it's premature to, to, to start making statements like that. Let's just see how things are going. And, and uh, she called a week later and said, I canceled the surgery. And uh, now five years later, he is a healthy young man um, working in a, uh, as a stockbroker. So he's gotten through college and he's got his entry level job. He also, he had, I identified a wheat and dairy allergy in him. And he's able to at times eat wheat and dairy without getting any symptoms. Um, but if he eats too much of it, his symptoms start to come back and then he, doubles down on the megaspore and, and uh, his symptoms are, are controlled. So we, he really did a good job of removing the, the stressor of wheat and dairy, uh, but he had done that before. He had removed wheat and dairy alone from his diet. He had never done it while in conjunction with the probiotic. 
I still felt that that was a necessity, that that still was an immune trigger for him and that eliminating it, but also taking the spores that would allow his immune system to, uh, to heal itself, that, that, that the combination of the two things were, were integral. And so that's, that's one of my home run stories. But I have to be honest, um, there are, I, I could tell you some challenging stories. And when I do presentations and they ask for you know, case studies, I give them that case study and then I quickly follow it with two failed ulcerative colitis case studies. Um, inflammatory bowel disease is a very hard condition to work with. And I'm not here to say that the pro Microbiome Labs products uh, clear it 100% of the time. Uh, that, that's not fair to that group of people, and it's just not true. Um, we work really hard finding solutions to individuals. Um, and, and when I work with doctors one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what I spend most of my time doing now, is more consulting with the doctors that are using my products, treating their patients. It's a way that I can impact more patients in my life, so, and I enjoy working with doctors. So the, the conversation I have with them constantly is stop looking for the cookbook, find the way for this patient to get better. There is a way. And, you know, in, with our suite of products, you know, the, the total gut restoration program is, is a great program for ulcerative colitis patients. Uh, the problem is, is that most ulcerative colitis patients, most inflammatory bowel patients, they can't tolerate uh, the total gut restoration program in its entirety right out of the gates. We have to wean them on slowly to certain products. We have to, in some cases, control inflammation before we even start to recondition the microbiome. You know, so the, the total gut restoration program is, is, uh, is Megaspore combined with the Mega Prebiotic and then the Mega Mucosal, the Mucosal Repair. In the inflammatory bowel patient, a lot of times I'll start with the mucosal repair. Uh, I, I won't even go into the megaspore because they're, they're, they're so inflamed. And, and, and oftentimes when they initially start megaspore, even though I told you my home run case, you know, that guy went right to the full dose first day, no symptoms. He immediately started getting better. I, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that, that, that he's an outlier the majority of inflammatory bowel patients don't tolerate, that's definitely don't tolerate the full dose right out of mm -hmm. the gate. Um, but sometimes don't even tolerate uh, megaspore in the beginning with, unless it's in very, very, very small quantities. And then you're not really getting benefits. So uh, with those patients, we change things up. We use the serum bovine immunoglobulins in the, in the mega IgG standalone, or we use the combination of the, the, immunoglobulins with the amino acids in the megamucosa and we'll just just wait for the inflammation to go down in those patients and then start slowly with the spores and and reconditioning the microbiome and so the the, the and that's why we don't sell a product retail you know mm -hmm. if 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 a if a consumer goes and buys a product on on the shelf and it gives them diarrhea they, they stop taking it right yeah uh, but but megaspore when it causes diarrhea that's typically for a good reason and 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 it can, the diarrhea can be managed while we correct the underlying problem that's really the reason why the diarrhea is there in the first place so so that's kind of you know that's where I spend my days now coaching the docs and and how to work with uh, with our products with their patients absolutely. Well, Dr. Bain, we are just about out of time, but I wanted to uh, make sure that I gave you some time at the end for you to let our listeners know where they can find out more about uh, Microbiome Labs and the products you offer. So our website's the best place to go for all our research, who we are, what, what our goals are. You know, I, I like to think that, that we've created a company that if I was a doctor, when I was in clinical practice, that I would want to be associated with. You know, a company that's investing in research and understanding that's only going to make the doctors that, that use those products 
smarter and, 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 and better with what they do, you know? So I think a, a visit to our website is the easiest way to see who we are and what we do and, and what our suite of products are and, and, and why we've designed them the way that we have. And so that website is uh, microbiomelabs.com. And uh, you can, and we, you've got great access to our, uh, our research on that site. So you can get a sense of what we're doing. Um, and then as some of the studies get done, we, we post those studies up there so that fresh information is available for you regularly. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you again for coming on and sharing this great information and your expertise in the world of uh, the microbiome and gut health. Um, I know our listeners are going to take a lot away from this uh, today, so I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Joe. I appreciate you having me. Of course. So uh, this has been your host, Dr. Coppice from the Neuro Wellness Podcast. Be well.